Hello folks, welcome back to another video here on Delivery Drivers Rideshare Alliance channel and I want to welcome all the new subscribers here. If you could take a second to hit the like button, the subscription button, and the notification bell so you won't miss any more videos. This uh, channel is about exposing the lies, fraud, corruption, manipulation of the gig app companies and trying to get drivers better than fair wages. But that's not all this uh, channel is all about. And I do have two, uh, two other channels, Gig Apps Exposed and DoorDash Gig Economy Police Channel. So welcome. Today's video, uh, I am going to go over a recent uh, interview that was done by this AM Wake Up channel uh, for Jeff Thomas Black. Jeff Thomas Black is a really great friend of mine, and he is a person that... Uh, basically helped the gig community awaken from the nightmare that we are now in with a video called um, The Beginning of the End of DoorDash. And that was last year, but he's been around for quite a while. He's been on uh, Twitter um, for well over five years. Um, he's published all kinds of... Um, uh, pieces on, on Twitter, and uh, he's well known in the gig community, um, especially with a book that he has coming out in the near future called Full Dash Closure. Uh, I think it's Escaping the Singularity. Uh, I'm not, not exactly sure of the full title, but the whole point of it is he's got a wonderful book coming out. And uh, anyways, he was, he's, He's come out of uh, his slumber. Uh, <laughs> he's been taking a little bit of a break, and uh, he's back on the scene in in uh, some capacity, and we'll be back even more. But I wanted to. I promised him that I would show you guys uh, this uh, this interview that he did recently, and this is has to do with um, uh, the narcissistic. Uh, <laughs> Uh, narcissistic problem that exists within uh, corporations and um, just gaslighting and everything that has to do with uh, the current situation and the state of affairs that we're in as far as artificial intelligence and uh, everything that's tied into gig work. And uh, I haven't watched this yet, so I'm going to be watching this alongside uh, you guys as well. So anyways, uh, here we go folks and uh let's roll it let's see let's take a look at joe biden being very lost <laughs> it's coming up here who minute, are the folks. fucking like kids just hanging out here though yeah, what is this Jeff will be in in a second. This is, he starts right around the th three o'clock, uh, three o'clock time. <laughs> They're all yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pretend they're all yelling at him. <laughs> oh, by the way, the AM Wake Up channel is over on Rumble. It's fucking great. This is on Rumble, by the way. He's on this plane for almost two full minutes before they fucking finally get him to... It doesn't even look anything like Air Force One. <laughs> no, I mean, that looks like a, you're just, <laughs> I was going to say, if he had his wrong boarding zone for Southwest, and he just went on the wrong. I don't even know the name of the host's name here, these two guys, but like I said, Jeff will be in very What the shortly. hell do you think he's doing there? Just there he walking is. in circles. Here's Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Well, hey there. Hey. How are you? Jeff. Doing really well. Doing really well. Enjoying the show. This is my uh, this is my value for value ad. I'm kind of a non-economic entity, but I have uh, a face. 
Heck yeah. I'm gonna face. Hey, you guys are doing. You guys are doing great stuff. The Whitney Webb stuff is uh, so critical. So critical. I uh, I sent. Um, there he is. There's the big guy. There he is. <clears throat> okay, Mr. President, let's get you on the right airplane. <laughs> Looks like he doesn't even know where the hell he is. I mean, in his defense, he might have thought he just landed again. <laughs> is he know? back to being six feet tall again? I was going to say, did you grow? <laughs> they switch him out in there? They did. They did. They swapped him out. There was a different Biden in there. That's why they had him do it. Just go into the wrong plane. We'll get your replacement. <laughs> He walked up those stairs six foot four. He walked back down them at six foot. That's awesome. Okay, so <laughs> Jesus. the guy's name is uh, Steve. Yeah, oh, I mean, hold I, on I a think, second. Yeah, I, I said. <laughs> okay, I lost my place for a quick second, but here we go. Let's roll it here. You know, I, I saw somebody trying to uh, define cognitive dissonance online the other day, and they did a very bad job. But cognitive dissonance is is what each of us is is literally suffering through as we take every breath uh, that we take today, because uh, we're primates. We're, we're human beings that are designed to uh, use our senses to make some kind of uh, of comprehensible. Uh, framework for our world and and that's been betrayed uh, to us by the people that stole our information here's the problem guys is that that we're now data points and they don't need us anymore uh, we are now uh, no longer consumers we are burdens to uh, their plan and that's what that's what Whitney described so well and that's why this this fucking duopoly of septuagenarians and and uh, political operatives and press and bullshit and manufactured consent that we that we call voting uh, and again let's put our big girl and big boy pants on and and big uh, non-binary pants on we know voting has literally no impact upon policy or anything in our lives like you know when i was growing up uh i'm a child of narcissistic parental abuse but one thing i learned i was told uh, spit in one hand, Steve, wish in the other, and then see what you get the fucking most of. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. My, uh, my dad and my grandfather had a much more colorful version <laughs> of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, what happened? So, there we uh, go. you know, this is. Right now, what we have, and I actually, in my writing, which, you know, if, if we live long enough or something might be on paper or not, doesn't really fucking matter because uh, we're all non-economic entities here. Uh, we, <laughs> trade and slave tokens between us right now is, is, really, uh, is really just a, a, a futile uh, pursuit, isn't it? Isn't it? Since t in a world of billionaires... What do you think the three hundred dollars in your bank account is actually fucking worth? Uh, pro well, I, currently, uh, it's it's worth zero since I can't access it. Well, and actually, don't no, jeez, this is it. this is like voting. This is manufactured consent. It's actually worth less than nothing because it's hurting you because it's making you buy into a system that's not going to fucking work because the capitalists don't have to give you their capital. They don't have to give you employment. They don't have to let you have a place to lay down at night to sleep. They can just go like, no, where you're laying down is a place I own and you can't sit there. Would you like to sit someplace that's free? It's right behind these bars. Except for that's not even free because we're, <laughs> yeah. we're listening. Uh, she had, I think, a Jimmy Dore segment up uh, on the fucking TV when I got here. And they were talking about how currently in California it costs $132,000 a year to house an inmate. Look, man, slaves are expensive. You got to get a fucking return on investment. What do you think this, this war and military industrial complex is about? We run this shit on slavery. Yeah, right? yeah, well, so it gets shit done. Are fucking expensive. Humans are expensive. Humans are a fucking pain in the ass and an absolute impediment to the to the future of uh, Peter Thiel. So, uh, 
you got to understand where we are in this hierarchy, which is uh, less than zero, which was a book once when there were books. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a, I want to try and bring it up because I haven't and Whitney, heard it. by the way, points out that when, when they uh, take over the internet and start making you flash your, uh, your uh, retinas and government IDs uh, and you can't find any of those paper books, uh, you mm -hmm. ever seen uh, Fahrenheit uh, 357? 457. 557, whatever the fucking burning temperature is of, uh, of all the paper that you used to see. 451 like, degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, 451. So, so uh, I've got a half shitty memory. Anyway, uh, Whitney makes the very good point that uh, you lost a physical book could very well be your loss of books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I appreciated the Corbett segment that yep. wrapped the uh, <clears throat> wrapped the review this morning. But, yeah. By the way, my friend, the independent review, I think we follow each other on Twitter. I don't know you. Uh, thank you for your work. I enjoy the, the, the stuff you do every week. I enjoy the oh, hell I nice share it. Nobody sees my fucking Twitter anymore anyway. And oh, see my good. likes or secrets. You'll never find out. Uh, you'll never find out that I really am a huge fan of uh, Tay Tay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, thanks, man. No, that's uh, no one sees my shit either. So any any kind of sharing helps get get this out to people and am wake up man that's that's the best thing anyone can we went share. from uh back in the day uh you know just steve and i have probably been connected for like what six seven years now back in the day i was between uh, two to three million views a week on twitter wow now it's like uh, something i like see get see by 200 people elon elman's doing a great job Yep, that's because they're censoring. No, I was even trying the thing. He's censoring all the channels. The name is. He's a Trumper now, right? He's into politics again. <laughs> yeah. Is he into South African politics, or does he just like uh, American politics? Is he, is well, he, so he, he likes Nicaraguan politics too. He's a real political animal. Back. He's yeah. He's gonna he's gonna fist fight. Yeah, the Nicolas Maduro. Yeah. <clears throat> now that uh, that could be a just scenario in a real world. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if uh if maduro wins then elon has to concede that he's the duly elected president of venezuela if elon wins then maduro gets in a rocket and goes to mars well i think that's the the parameters i think we have to we we're, we have to literally uh, decide what constitutes an election this is this is a wonderful thing the debate that we're having right now because we're going to be having an election and and the debate is not about who's what the outcome of this one's going to be the debate is going to be about the fact we haven't even agreed upon a process that that's how fuck, that's how fucked we are which of course you know in a failing empire like i say we're failing up we're failing up into techno feudalism Right. But we're in a failing empire. So we're failing up into a new hell that will be absolutely worse. But in a failing empire, like what else are you going to expect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they definitely want to get us in that bio biosecurity voting and all that. If people actually think too many people think that works. I mean, to me, it's about as <clears throat> you get the little sticker like half the guys did with their jabs about four years ago. Well, somebody needs like a. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. there's off, there already is one, but get like a PayPal mafia uh, mm -hmm. stock index, and you can uh, you can be an investor in the in the future uh, Hunger Games of the world. Yeah, probably a great investment. But again, uh, <laughs> everything is exponential except for human beings and our rage. But you know, everybody else is going exponential. We're looking for a three percent raise on uh, 1985 uh, minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. And on that three percent compounded over never uh, is going to be great. I mean, look, the UAW and these union fuckers that are still pretending we're in an old world. Well, so you know, we went from we went from unionizing uh, uh, living wage employment for for that supported entire families. Now we're trying to uh, unionize fucking Starbucks and uh, and and. Uh, whatever other dog shit corporations are bottom feeding from the poverty stricken, uh, you know, inmates of the United States. It's like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. You got that. This grift has gone on way too fucking long. And these guys are such political sellouts. Now they're just blown around with the fucking wind. And, and by the way, 
Uh, where's the fucking anti-war party? Because that's the one I would vote for if I ever wasted a vote again. Where's the anti-war party? Because I don't see it. A, I, don't, I, don't vote for, I don't vote for war pigs. Sorry. That's, that's Chase Oliver from Who? the Libertarians, right? Or, or not? <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a party, Steve. Hey, that's that's the only anti-war candidate you're going to get right now, Jeff, is the, the dude who thinks that you can trans kids and that's okay. Mm-hmm. I prefer um, Vermin Supreme, man. I'm a vermin supreme uh, loyalist. I I don't. I I'm a fan of vermin supreme. <laughs> I don't actually remember all his I did, policies. I think he's going to nail me to the wall on the vermin supreme uh, platform. I I'm just I'm being facetious, but you know it, he the libertarians did peak at vermin yeah. supreme. As long as we're talking about Weimar Germany, make sure you rush over to Big Frog Clothing Company and get <laughs> your know. Weimart your Weimart shirt. <laughs> uh, because that's where the fuck we are. The Walmart logo is actually burning hundred dollar bills. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and what retailers? What retailers will we have uh, left except for Walmart and Kroger and uh, and Amazon? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is <clears throat> look. They're literally crashing the economy and running the impoverished uh, app slaves and and uh, and wage slaves into the ground. This is this is uh, hideous, uh, intentional austerity. As we kick off World War Three with our endless uh, interventionist shenanigans, man. Uh, anyone still buying into this duopoly just just is is delusional. And and you know. I, it's yeah, Steve, right? Steve, you you have a variety of voices on this on this show. Uh, I have a variety of voices in my head. Slim, right? Some really interesting characters that come from some really niche points of view. So you got a guy that that is that is. Uh, I'm plugging the shit out of your show because I really like a guy that comes from a very yeah. different place from a lot of us. He's he's into the beef industry. He's into ranching. He's into mm-hmm. all these things. But you know, even if you're a vegan. I, I just can't see you watching Slim fight for his existence, uh, the existence of, of, of edible, safe uh, food, the, the, the existence of family. I just, even if you're a fucking vegan, man, and I'm a huge fan of Daniel Schmachtenberger, who suggests that, that, that we must all transition over time. So I don't have the fucking right answers. I still like me. I'm going to admit it, you know, but, but, but even if you are that, how can you not look at what Slim's doing and see that value? Because what Slim is fighting against is our right to fucking survive. To make no mistake about this, Slim ain't fighting for the beef industry. He's fighting for the survival of humanity. Even if you don't eat fucking meat, I'm just going to fucking argue that. And, and oh, I, that's what I love about this show. Even even if, you know, sometimes I see I see some of the guests head for Narnia, like how how uh, how different is that from the real world we have to deal with? Right. We mm-hmm. have to deal with people that whose opinions go go all wacky. Uh, but that's all right. Like that's free speech. We're, we got to stop. We're so uh, conditioned to be afraid of our own shadows. And what we're really going to do is, you know, what's really going to happen is we're going to be droned by something we can't even see. So like what we're what we're told to fear is not the thing we're supposed to, we should really be fearing. What we should fear is the shit we can't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Slim had a good um, that segment yesterday. We we're just talking about you know Saturday markets and stuff, and obviously some are pretty shitty and have the buy-ins that are crazy. But even to his point of just doesn't even have to be meat. You know, other people just farmers, local stuff. Reach out, shake their hand, and then from there, you know, you can find someone else in some other trade. You know, whether it's construction, right. electrical, you know, anything. And then that's that secondary you know economy you can build i'm just- I'm growing shit all over the place and i've probably picked about 40 pounds of free wild blackberries in the last yeah. three weeks man nice. i mean like it, like this is i said it before like the, literally the last time steve and i were on the air together was right when the pandemic was kicking off and that kind of ended my social media for a couple of years because i just didn't want to be part of that fucking shit show and i didn't mm-hmm. think there was anything to offer to a fucking uh bullshit parade I wasn't wrong. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm glad I stayed the fuck out of that shit. Uh, but when, when I did, when I did see Steve, you know, we were talking about like heading into this shit show. What did we need to know? Who did they save 
when people needed a saving. Like when the lifeboats were going to be sent out, who'd they send lifeboats for? Not you. Do we have more doctors today? Do we have more hospitals? Are we doing better on environmental sustainability? Do we have uh, a better uh, food chain, or, you know, supply chain and food supply? Like, no, it's all gone the wrong direction. And everything that they did uh, for this for this alleged, uh, you know, world incident in which they had to crush uh, the remaining independence of, of anybody's economy, uh, all they had to show for that was uh, was lies. Yep. Right. It was and, planned. And so it was planned. We have to learn. Plandemic. That that. The system that we were brought up into, the system that we've been uh, attached to and inculcated in and propagandized in since the day we were born is not the fucking answer. And that's that's just that's that's a really hard thing. That's the truth. It's a really hard thing. Whitney said in her podcast, Whitney said uh, it's, you know. Like we want, we want the nation to be our daddy. We want, we want Ma- Kamala to be our mamala. We want this parental guidance, whatever. This it's not here for us, kids. I'm sorry. I know you want the nation to love you. I know you want the president to 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 be a patriot and to act in your best interest, and the, for corporations to uh, produce innovation for humanity. None of those things are going to happen <laughs> ever. That's right. It's over. American dreams over. They felt over. some kind of way on uh, Union of the Unwanted the last Monday when, when I was like, look, there's not a single person in the government that's a patriot. If they were a patriot, they would not be involved in this <laughs> government. If they're a patriot, like, they'd probably be as dead as the Boeing whistleblowers. Those <laughs> 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 <Good point. laughs> guys are dead. Yeah, <laughs> and if you don't think fucking global corporations fucking kill people, go check out uh, Eric Prince's Twitter feed. Oh shit, yeah, <laughs> he, he does it for profit. Yeah, lots and lots Openly. and lots of profit. Openly, yeah. <clears throat> we're in a world of uh, laws, are we, Steve? I tried to explain this the other night that um, the total complete breakdown of the Secret Service at that event and the. You know, the fact that they're counting on the FBI to do the cover up and this and all of that is a push to privatize these intelligence agencies, yes. privatize the protection of the president, privatize uh, the right. CIA. And, and, mm-hmm. and everyone behind it is playing both fucking sides. 100%. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, the, that's the problem. And that's what Whitney. Uh, that's what Whitney explains so brilliantly in her in multiple of her podcasts, right? Yeah. The people funding it, the people in charge, the people building JD Vance, the people building what we see as a fat old bloated orange fucking Donald Trump. Like these people are the stage actors that are performing the tricks of Peter Thiel and the PayPal fucking mafia, and these mm-hmm. guys aren't even fucking hiding it, right? That's what. That's why people got to watch AM Wake Up is because they do say the quiet parts out loud. Yep. They are uh, spilling the beans about how they plan to take over the world. There's just so few of us that are willing to fucking accept that mommy and daddy don't love us like we really want them to because it hurts so fucking much. There's so much grief in accepting that you are a fucking product of empire narcissistic abuse. Yep. There's so much. Look, man, I'm a 56 year old guy. I can explain to you the grief of growing up with narcissistic abuse, and you can go look in the mirror and explain it to yourself. They're it's openly really saying hard it too. Every day to believe, to, to, to understand that the system that was supposed to, you know, be the greatest and protect you and be about justice and be about uh, uh-huh. saving children and, it's all and corrupt protecting now. people from Nazis. Uh, it's like we're the baddies right from 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 the great uh you know english comedy like are we the baddies yeah we're the baddies it's it just it i don't want to be on the bad team i never did i didn't join i didn't voluntarily join the fucking nazi team we just ended up <laughs> on it <laughs> yep which is you know kind of wild that we would be viewed as the Nazi team, seeing as how we're a wholly owned subsidiary of a handful of Zionists. Right. Uh, right. Uh, and, you know, 
that's and clever from marketing. Coming from uh, a never practicing uh, non-religious uh, ethnic Jew, uh, it's weird, man. Mm-hmm. It's strange. It's a strange world that that we live in, and and again, a world of total cognitive dissonance. Because if you want to hear somebody, if you want to hear your neighbor, you want to hear anybody just sound completely fucking insane, uh, insane, have them have them justify war, have them justify killing somebody, and just watch them. Watch them try and rationalize in their brain as they as they try and uh, justify uh, literally being a murderer and uh, exterminating innocent people. Like it's it's a it's a uh, it's a viral cultish insanity that we're stuck in right now. I mean, I look on Twitter and it's just like blows my mind. These people celebrating, you know, r- rooting on Ukraine and and fucking uh, and and the. the Zionist terror as if it's a fucking sporting event. Like it's just it's just wild, man. I mean, you literally are taking mothers and fathers and community members and turning them into drooling uh murderous maniacs. Because that's what war is, man. <laughs> that's what war no, is. No. If you're lying to yourself about what the fuck war is and what America is and what we're doing, yeah, that that's on you at this point. Again, that the, the information not you know it's not about conspiracy anymore. the information is out there now to understand that people in charge do not want good things for you yeah. if you're watching Absolutely this program, correct. you're not in, on the on, you're not on the winning team right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and going back to that this a little further back you were talking about the privatization you know of all the three letter agencies if it's anyone right. that clip i played if anyone wants to go back it's like there's at least probably another hour or so she goes into good depth of her previous talking with you know donnie trying to do that when he first got in and mm-hmm. you know all those guys and i know steve's talked about it a lot but if anyone hasn't seen it yet or hasn't listened to that segment um i mean it's not anything new that they're trying to do to prime and, and look, man, i i had i had the world's whopping case of trump derangement syndrome man I came back onto Twitter. My, my handle here is LRB. It is not locker room banner is not. I came back onto Twitter because I fucking hated that bastard so fucking much. So, so, you know, and here we are, <laughs> but, but, but to, to the idea of using, uh, this old bloated has been a uh, second termer as a mm-hmm. harbinger of uh, change. change. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you played like a fiddle. Everyone right. needs a savior. You ain't it's, bringing I mean, in any on. change. We, we, Nothing. We did this one. We I know. did this one. What's crazy to me is that the people who were critical of Trump mm-hmm. during the last three years are now 100% in the tank for him. Go, uh, go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be, and Trump came out at the fucking RNC and said, I am going to buy your vote. I am shamelessly standing before you telling you that I will buy your vote and it's only going to take 1200 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like, you know, like, I mean, flat out fucking said that. Trump says out loud that, that votes don't matter and he doesn't really care either. He's just about having the power. Yeah. I'll give him this. He does say all this shit flat out loud, like everything. Yeah. He right to your face. Not and, that it's and good. By the way, by the way, this this alternate reality that we're fed has been going for a while. Back when I did have a uh, severe TDR, severe TDR. I mean, I cut people out of my life that were that's, Trump, that's Trump so derangement. Re- absolutely <laughs> petrified by him. Is is TDR Trump derangement retardation? Yeah, that was what I had. <laughs> TDS. I don't know if it was TDR TDS. Maybe you had the TDRS <laughs> version. Um. But, but like this, this guy. Uh, oh shit! I don't remember where the fuck I was going with it now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally anyway, derailed that. Th- this is the remember. This is the guy that was love you, Jeff. That was like deciding maybe you couldn't leave New York and drive to Connecticut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe you weren't allowed <laughs> to go to allowed to leave it to cross state lines, like. He was up there with Dr. Bricks and Fauci every fucking day. I mean, these people have the yep. shortest, stupidest memories. It's insane. And how it can just flip on a dime, right? And, the- and, and to point out of that, folks, is that Trump has been at the World Economic Forum. So he's part of the big, I mean, he's always been part of the um, the club that we ain't in. And so he's not the solution. And he's the granddaddy of the uh, the jab in the arm. 
you know, because he pushed all of that with Fauci and all that. That's what they're saying here, you know. And then they go and right J.D. Back. Vance, man, the best part of that guy is 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 his eyes just pop. Like they're, just they're hip hip a eyeliner. Into his his uh, his his uh, meat meat puppet. <laughs> we we should yeah yeah we should we should start rocking the guy liner in support of jd vance so giving these guys a shout, shout out this is steve from am wake up hhbic it says and then this guy on the right is from the independent review if you want to check them out this i think there's only like uh, let me see oh there's still a little bit left here I'm oh, gonna have to get a tattoo though because I just Joel? can't. I see. I'm a, what number one? I'm a crier, and number two, I just can't see maintaining the uh, consistency. There was somebody being just fucking savage to Jason Burmis when that segment with Scott. Was <laughs> yeah, there was well, some rough. It, <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all gotta. Yeah, y'all gotta <laughs> just be like that's this shit's hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, was, I can't think it was Greg, but he was like, "I want Burmis to start wearing JD Vance guy liner." So he yeah, like a streak well, every Burmis, time he reached for look, Trump on Burmis camera. would look tremendous. His eyes would pop as well. Uh, <laughs> Burmis has some magnificent eyes. He does. He does. Maybe that's a Green Day's tribute eyeliners for. Is that for JD? Maybe it is. Maybe Full it circle. Is. Right. I, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> Um, what do I have? Oh, that's right. I wanted to do this story yesterday and we just, we didn't have a, a way to work it in. Um, they're, they're trying to make an imaginary bio repository on the moon. You guys, okay. On the moon, we're going to have the, the, what is it? The Svals, Svalsbard seed bank or whatever it is up there in Norway. They're going to do that, but they're going to do that on the moon for mm -hmm. people. Yeah, and this is a totally real thing that totally won't be a massive money laundering on operation. No, not at all. Um, let's see. So with thousands of species at risk of extinction, scientists devised a radical plan. A vault filled with preserved samples of our planet's most important and at-risk creatures located on the moon. <laughs> There's no more space in any of the deep underground military bases that we've, we've completely, you know, no use for caves or anything like that. We can't, Ar or Arkansas, not Arkansas, uh, fucking Kansas and Nebraska are completely full up underground with all of the other weird shit that's been built there. Uh, so we have to go to the moon for this. So, so this is a, this is a, a fascinating uh, psyop that's being run upon us because we're watching the physical world, our physical world, our local, our home, our, 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 our neighborhood, our parks, our streets. We're watching the physical decay of our environment before our very eyes living in poverty and austerity and joblessness and uh, war. And this is what they want uh, us to think about and to buy into. Well, and they're telling you that even when uh, the, even uh, the Svalbard seed bank in Norway is, mm -hmm. Not safe. We have to go to the moon for this. We have so, so this to. is it. This is part of this is part of narcissistic abuse, and and we're we're all we're all uh, victims here of empire narcissistic abuse. Uh, it what what that abuse does, what the constant cognitive dissonance and fear and everything does, it causes confusion. It causes us to really be unable to even process our own thoughts anymore unable to do that primate sense making that we that we have to do and robert sapolsky is another one if you want to understand what's going on here go watch robert sapolsky uh psych psychologist phd uh psychologist uh the psychologist and primatologist from stanford and he will explain to you why biologically psychologically 
the things that the empire does uh, with the military industrial complex, with the prison industrial complex in particular, with uh, but it, essentially with everything that we're doing, it's against human nature. And and that's that's the beauty if you're P- Peter Thiel and uh, Sam Altman or Altman or one of these other evil fuckers is that AI is a highly effective uh, way to make humans believe and do things that are not in their best interest. And it's been deployed for so long, most of us can't even see it anymore. Already, your medical claims are denied by AI. Already, uh, well, that's, millions that, of people be, the, around the world are in slavery to AI through let, let's be, let's be and Uber and Lyft in this dog shit uh, fucking gig economy fraud. That that's not AI, labor. though. Sorry, that, I'm young. Go ahead. Sorry. That's not AI. It's just a fucking response program. Like, so, it, so this, we're, this, we're this so is great. far this is what away. AI is. No, 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 no. Artificial intelligence, at least the way that it's been sold, the people who are fucking responsible for creating the stuff say that it's not going to be anywhere close to achieved until like 2070 something. Okay. So like what, what we have right now, just real quick, let me, let me get let me yeah, yeah. Put my point out. What we have right now are humans writing some code so that they don't have to pick up a phone. They've written code for a fucking answering machine yep. effectively. And there, then it's been marketed as AI to give people the fake idea that there is an all intelligent computer thing that is making yeah. decisions for them. But we're fucking 50 years yep. away from an actual artificial intelligence or singularity event or anything like that that's right now it's just a, a marketing scam that people right. have bought into that, so right now ai and, and there's a guy named ed zitron who write, writes about technology really really well uh, very very intelligent guy uh and there's actually he did he did a, a podcast on uh some english uh academics who essentially proved and detailed it's a bullshit machine right now that's ai in terms of what sam altman and the the chat gpt programs so they're bullshit machines they're they're giving output without any allegiance whatsoever good bad or indifferent to accuracy and reality and veracity so it's just a bullshit machine right and that's how it's being used and and so what what we're being propagandized into again by these by these con men that are stealing billions and trillions of dollars from the economy that it's never coming back all this fucking bullshit that sam altman's po- this is this is a scam as you're saying see this this is just bullshit faulty software that they're able to control but the problem is what people call AI. So Steve, what you're calling AI or what would be this AI would be a generative AI that is essentially have some type of human like capabilities, maybe even depending on who you believe, I say no, some kind of sentience, which is the ability to feel and, and, and to be, you know, alive, if you will. I don't believe that's even possible, but, uh, and I'm no fucking techno optimist, but anyway, uh, the AI that is the things that are being called AI today, as Steve said, are products of corporate fraud. AI systems today are just monopolistic systems of corporate fraud. That's all they are. They don't generate the correct answer or facts. They're bullshit machines. And if you're using Uber or Lyft or DoorDash, you're using bullshit machines that make you think there is a market for of services that is provided to you as a consumer or make you think that there's a market of employment that's available to you as a labor none of those things are real you're playing grand theft human you're playing a video game with your fucking life while they pretend it's real and so again one could even argue well maybe that's what the technical future is is we're going to play video games for money and that's how we're going to eat right but if that's the case, you should be told that, shouldn't you? 
Shouldn't, shouldn't you have informed consent if your life is really a fucking video game? We we got rid of informed consent in 2020. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No yeah, we're yeah. the human sentai yeah. pad, right? I mean, South Park came yeah. real. We, we, that was our informed consent. Yeah. And not to keep hammering on the Whitney thing, but it just popped in my head was they had a good discussion of the AI being used for military in Ukraine, right, for the drones. Mm-hmm. And all uh, what their main point was just out of that is it's it's just a way to, you know, relieve accountability. And they can just blame it on AI, even though it sucks. And the, the program they use is not even accurate, but it's just a way to relieve accountability and it's not their fault. And then they'll put that to, you know, kind of go from there. I want to say that Whitney made the uh, same or similar point uh, the last time that she dropped in on yeah. the show, um, which I have to. It's it's a, it's our theme, sure right? Our again. theme is the people that you're supposed to be voting for are not running this fucking shit show. Well, yeah. 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 And as soon as they can, you know, see how simple that is? See how simple that is? As soon as they can. We're not talking to the people in charge. If you're ever in sales training, if if you're ever a corporate schmuck like me, you're in sales training, right? What do they they teach you? Got to to emotionally connect with Mm -hmm. your audience, right? Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy, man? I fucking. I. I, for research purposes, for blunt force, mm-hmm. uh, I've watched a few episodes of that whatever podcast, and the fucking even like the OnlyFans whores that they bring on there, like all of them have the neuro linguistic programming training. All of them have like some level of media training, and it is the just the voice. The cadence, corporate cadence, Ugh. is so fucking easy to spot. But P- I, I understand why people fall for it. I get it. I do. It's that drunk sincerity that people just crave, man. Mm-hmm. They fucking, they, they, we've had our entire lives of inauthentic media, inauthentic entertainment. And people are starved for that. So uh, if you have just a little bit of training, you can fake your authenticity. And I think that's what people have now glommed onto, especially in the the mainstream alternative media, is the well-trained, well-groomed, fake authentic people who are able to deliver a message in a worldview in a way that you either walk away from it super scared and like needing to come back to that source for more. We need to get, you know, scared or worked up about this or they walk away from it thinking that they know more than their neighbor. And again, there's, there's that confusion that comes in from being told not to believe your senses being told that how you function as a primate you're now supposed to you're supposed to disregard yourself and so what what's the product of this constant cognitive dissonance this constant narcissistic abuse at the hands of propagandists it's 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 learned uh learned hopelessness it's uh it's moral injury right and so that what that's what we have right now with with those of us that have been selected out, while those propagandists that Steve talks about have been so meticulously selected in, right? Is is that we were written out of the game, right? If history is written by the winners, uh, the present is also being written by the winners, right? And so we've been so meticulously fucking selected out. That, that, you know, this, this show fucking amazes me because I, I watch, you know, on, on the, uh, on the rock fin, I like to watch on the rock fin because it's completely incognito. Uh, they don't have the ability to let Steve share the comments on screen. I love that part. Uh, so, you know, we've been selected out into where there can be hundreds of people watching this show that can't put together uh, $15. What does this tell you? Like, be be your own economist. Use your eyes and ears. It's not because we don't fucking care. Because there's a lot of things you can do every morning besides watch Steve and 
and the cast of uh, and the cast of characters. So people care. So where's 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 the medium of exchange then? Like, what are we doing here? Because I, I think I think we are uh, stuck in learned helplessness and in moral injury, and we don't even fucking know how to get up in the morning anymore. Is what I think. I I would hope that the vast majority of AM wake up diehards have figured out how to do those things. I I would hope. I would mm-hmm. hope. I, I really do feel and, like and, and we do we do, but and how many dollars do we do it for? We do it for zero dollars and zero cents. Yeah. Of the empire's money, because we don't have it. They do. They took I will, I, before Donald Trump gives away all of America's Bitcoin. I, I would like to encourage a Bitcoin oh. billionaire to sponsor the show. Yeah. Just be like, hey, dude, here's fucking here's a quarter million dollars. Breathe a little bit easier for the next couple of years. Don't That'd run be, around uh, telling That'd people Bitcoin is a tool of freedom, please. Though, no, no, we, we holy, don't. It's we a don't. wholly owned uh, tool of the oligarchs, like all other things that are wholly owned. Every every time I have a conversation, well, not every time, <clears throat> but uh, every time I have a, a new conversation uh, about Bitcoin, and I brought this up to Mark Goodwin, who edits and uh, is the uh, you know operator of Bitcoin Magazine. And he, he did, he did, Mark Goodwin and Whitney did a series of uh, interviews together. Look up Mark Goodwin with uh, oh. Whitney Webb and you'll get some killer content. What, what's funny is when they're pretending to not be in the same house. It's my favorite. <laughs> they, it's my, they my favorite. Era now, now. Okay. We, can't tell, we can't tell everybody we're a couple yet. So let's pretend <laughs> like we're in different locations, even though the paneling on the wall is identical. Yeah. They, they, they did. They did somewhere. They were actually in the same place. Oh yeah, yeah. Recently, yeah. Recently, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, that's, why Steve, that's why Steve and I broadcast from different states. Still. Yeah, I'm trying to keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> I really am. We're, we're we're playing Where's Waldo, but, but with broadcast. You know, Hell yeah! The, the psyop is so deep right now, Steve. Like. I mean, we really are. We're we're at a turning point because uh, it's not economically feasible just to like sit down anywhere because there's nowhere to sit that they don't want to charge you fucking money. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, and by the way, dude, anytime somebody like uh, th- this always happens. Anytime yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the value for value thing comes up, like the people who actually do contribute are like, "Hey, what the fuck?" You know. But that's why we. Thank <laughs> no, God you bless you, rich people. Every day. And make sure that we we shout you out, or at least try to. Um, and, and sometimes, like if something comes in today or uh, over the weekend, like that, you'll get thanked on Slow News Day. If you're not watching, then you won't hear it, you know. But um, and I think I should probably start. Uh, nah, no, never mind. Um, but the Slow News Day goes out on the AM Wake Up Rock thing too, or Rumble rather. The, the real challenge is kind of. I always think of it when we're watching Slim is that, uh, again, government approved mediums of exchange really have their limitations for us when we're being starved out in austerity. Like Steve's going to figure out how we can send him. Steve's going to figure out how we can send him like eggs and live chickens. Like there's going to have to be a oh, chicken. Oh, I'll take it. Where yeah, we can send a chicken. Yeah, I love the show, Steve, sending you a chicken. Send me a chicken. Uh, uh, these these government approved mediums of exchange are going to get real fucky when they have a single sign on with your government ID mm-hmm. and uh, they're going to be coming to Steve for the taxes that he's going to pay off that Rockfin money. Right. I, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, at this point, man, I, the best thing that you could do for, uh, for the value to value value for value thing. Um, yeah. is like turn that into, I love how, and I need to do this. Uh, Chris has, is Amazon wish list linked? Oh uh, yeah, right. Um, and, and I've always been a fan of you know taking taking from the state the equipment that you will need for your own self sustainability. Oh. <clears throat> so in that regard, it's really cool. There's a number of different things. I did again. Uh, do the I hung out with over the weekend, Jay. Um, who is with the Fluoride Action Network? That's cool. Um, uh, they have a or are trying to and have for a long time curated a database of you know, all of the information related to that, and it is disappearing. 
like with what Corbett was talking about with the Internet Archive, that a lot of the information about fluoride has been scrubbed from the fucking Internet. Uh, and, and if these people weren't like, you know, keeping physically printed out copies of the articles that they had downloaded and saved, they wouldn't have access to any of that. <clears throat> I've, uh, Minecraft got hacked. The, the corporations have polluted uh, humanity so ruthlessly and and so lawlessly, right? That the idea that we have some uh, governmental agencies or some type of uh, people looking out for our well being and health while we're uh, poisoned to death by corporations is ludicrous, man. These guys have been running wild uh, for decades now. Well, and I mean, I, I kind of joked a little bit about Donald Trump giving away all of our Bitcoin, but he actually just fucking said that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's take a listen. Who knows? Maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand him a little crypto check, right? We'll hand him a little Bitcoin and wipe out our $35 trillion. But how do you... <laughs> yeah, so so Whitney makes that point. Uh, Whitney makes that point in the in the latest podcast that you clipped out of, or maybe it was actually the one the one before that. But mm -hmm. they do the 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 bankers in charge do want to take the U.S. debt and put that on another ledger. Guess what that other ledger is? Uh, you just heard the man say the quiet part out loud. So, uh, and whose debt is that? That's your debt. Uh, Allegedly, I uh, I first heard the online censorship referred to as a modern day book burning by Crow Triple Seven. Hmm. Uh, I want to say that was like 2016, 2017, something like that. Um, and, and I had never thought about it <clears throat> in those terms up until that point. Uh, and then I was like, oh, yeah, holy shit, that's exactly what they're doing here in Corbett refer to it as the burning of the, you know, mm -hmm. a library of Alexandria. Minecraft got hacked this week and it reset everybody's accounts. I know this because Jesus. my kid. It, but OK, oh. so here's the yeah. thing. There was, a project. There, was a, there was a project going on in Minecraft that was called the Library of Alexandria. Oh, shit. And uh, the Project Censored had got in on it. There were a bunch of other people that, uh, what, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, and they were trying to build up a repository of information that you could go in in the game and, like, check out. Jesus. You know? And you would be able to get a copy of whatever it was that they were. And all of that, I believe, is gone. I'm not 100% on that because I, my kid didn't know about the library thing until he told me that he, uh, his account had got wiped out and like all of his universes were gone and shit like that. He was bummed. He was bummed. I'm like, you should have used a, you should have, you could draw. Just draw next time. Mm -hmm. Fucking leave the video games behind, maybe. <laughs> and he's like, no, dude, I'm 12. I was born on a screen. It's not going to work that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. I remember yeah. even mid 2020 2021 watching all ryan's shows you know on t lav and he'd have like during his live streams going back to articles or even just the past reporter study how they were changed as he was talking mm -hmm. and, and you know if it wasn't for like the internet archive at the time which it seems like they're getting rid of anyway like corbett was saying but at the time at least he could go back and be like look at this timestamp as it's happening and they were. Ch I want to mention something here that that I learned back uh, it had to be eight to ten years ago, but they have they have what's called Internet Two coming in, where it's not going to be as free as you think in how it is now. You're going to have to have a government ID to sign in and all that stuff. I don't know exactly when they're bringing that, but they plan on doing that. That's just a little tie into what they're saying here. We're changing it while he's talking about it. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. So, so a point to be made on this stuff, right? Is when we talk about history, we talk about race, we talk about politics, we talk about money, all of these different things. Uh, and every single one of the, these conversations keeps us from living in the present moment and doing anything of value uh, with our lives. Because uh, all of this together 
uh, doesn't make up anything that I, as an individual sitting in Portland, Oregon, can do with my life today. Not even a little fucking bit. Not even a teeny tiny bit. The, the literal best I can do is tune it out, think some, think some of my own thoughts, go for a walk, pick some free fucking blackberries, and uh, get some fucking sunshine. Because there are no answers from these fuckers. There are no answers online. And, and you know, the old uh, Google it, right, is now uh, Charmin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can Charmin it. You can wipe your ass with Google if you want to, but you just better know that what you're getting isn't uh, an internet search. You're getting right. Google. Yeah, yeah, th- that's fair. Um, I think uh, I think we gotta I think we gotta wind it down. Yeah, um, yeah I just uh, I had to come on and say hi and uh, hey, I re- I appreciate no, it. I was, and I if you guys don't know that. Jeff, Jeff is a fucking OG dude. I've known Jeff for like half a decade or a little bit more now. Je- Jeff's been around for been in the fucking trenches you guys. since 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 little Julian Assange was just a mere uh, abductee, right? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So thanks everybody. I think I thanked everyone. Who, peace, everybody. Uh, hey, nice to meet you, my friend. You too, Appreciate, man. Uh, nice to meet you, Jeff. Uh, all the best, Jeff. You take care of yourself, brother. It's good to right see on, you. Man. Good shit. Um, yeah, no, Jeff's an OG, man. Um, yeah, I think I thanked everybody. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty we're sure. And there was... Okay, so uh, that was the end of the uh, the podcast, the AM Wake Up show over on Rumble. Um, I'll try to leave the link in here so you can find that show if you like. I um, want to thank Jeff for doing the video and letting me know about it. He asked me to uh, upload it, to put it here, so you guys could hear it. So appreciate that, and make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. And I will see you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.